Hi everyone, and welcome to another edition of Travel Know How, special edition. Today I'm going to be making a very special soup. It's well known throughout Eastern Europe and Middle Eastern Europe, heading towards the Salak country. And that is Zupa Burashkova, beetroot dish uh, soup, and it is very popular here. And you'll find that uh, when traveling through Europe, uh, a lot of the places you know, beyond Germany, more towards Russia, it's very soup orientated place where you can go into a lot of restaurants and they're always offering some sort of uh, soup dish or another. And uh, this happens to be one of my favorite ones that I came across while I was in Estonia. And uh, I was always thinking, what makes it so yummy? Coming from an Asian background, I always sort of came across Asian soup dishes, but to come across a European uh, soup dish that was hearty and full of vegetables, uh, to me was absolutely really yummy. So here I am uh, with a recipe from a Polish babcha that has given me her recipe. So I hope to uh, do her proud and um, attempt to make the dish and see how it goes. And when it comes to cooking in Europe, when you do get a chance, anywhere along the Baltic countries, um, the Slavic countries, you will always get an opportunity to buy a really cheap bunch of soup mixed vegetables. And I can say that something of this size for a couple of kilos only costs something somewhere around $2.50 to $3 Australian. And you get a massive bunch of carrots, uh, celery root, um, leek, and also a couple of parsley root as well and these go great in any soup mix which is ideal and also some of them might include a, an onion or a few other uh, root vegetables but generally this is it and at the fruit markets if you can get to the fruit and veggie markets you will get a lovely bunch of vegetables for your soup stock so to break it on down here are the quick list of ingredients that I'll be using I'll be using about uh, two tablespoons of butter, uh, two tablespoons of sour cream, uh, a teaspoon of salt, uh, two tablespoons of flour, uh, two regular sized carrots, uh, that happens to be a parsley root, uh, using a whole leek. Uh, two regular size beetroot, uh, four small medium potatoes, and a quarter of a celery root, and that is a full size celery root itself, so that is absolutely ginormous. Uh, a little bit of pepper, and uh, that would basically be it for anyone who is a vegetarian. Now I'll also be throwing in some kielbasa for taste at the end of the soup mix so it gives it a bit more of a meaty bite but that's uh, that's it so I'll go through and prep all the ingredients um, I'm gonna need to boil up the beetroot first for at least a good half hour but while I'm doing that I'll also create the vegetable stock and uh, show you how it's done you can see here folks I have the beetroot in the pot and it is simmering away there It'll probably take about at least 35-40 minutes to uh, soften up. Um, in the meantime, I've already chopped up the leeks and put the butter in. Um, I will shortly uh, start up the stove here and cook up the leek. Uh, diced all the carrots and the parsley root and also the sicelaric uh, root. Um, now we're just only going to boil this up and use that as a stock flavoring and then remove it later on. I'll also do the same to the celery top. So we've got all the vegetables in now and uh, it's uh, just sauteing away. Now we want it to actually get a bit of color on it. So a bit of charring action to help flavor the stock a bit more. Um, now to help that along, I've also got the salt, so add in the salt. Seems a lot at first, but don't worry. This is a four and a half, five liter pot, and uh, I will be um, keeping this so loaded with vegetable, it's going to be so sweet. 
Anyway, um, we'll keep on cooking. It's been about a good 10-15 minutes now and all the vegetables are really truly wilted. You can see there's quite a lot of color and a um, bit of charring happening. Uh, don't worry, that's where all the flavor from the stock's going to come from. And you can really smell that butter too. Wow. This would probably go great on a sandwich. But we're going to make a soup, so uh, I'm going to tip around 3 liters of water into here and throw in the celery tops as well. Water took a little while to uh, get back to the boil. Uh, once it's on the boil, uh, I'll probably let it simmer for about half an hour um, to let all the flavors leach out. Uh, I had a little bit of taste of the stock and it's uh, very light, so I might add a little bit more salt in there. And um, about another half a teaspoon of salt, sprinkle it in. Of course, you add it depending on your taste but I wouldn't add any more salt um, until uh, the vegetables are fully cooked and released all their uh, sweet flavors out. I'm also going to add a bit of pepper, a bit of sprinkle, a quarter of a teaspoon and uh, yeah, stir it all in and let it go for half an hour. So the soup stock is coming along very nicely and um, the beetroot is now well cooked and I've rinsed it under the tap and cold water and peeled off the skin. Um, now if you've got a uh, cheese grater you can also use it to grate but I'd like everything to be you know little dicey bits. I know the soup's going to go cooking for another you know, 20 minutes and everything's going to break down even further but keep the little chunks uh, some people like it even more shredded, but that's the way I like it. And the trick to sort of getting these little tiny dice is uh, chop it like an onion. So first of all, I slice it down the side to the size of the cubes that you'd like it to be. And then slice it down through the side. Let's see, that angle might at this angle. All right. So, slice it down the side like that. Lay out there. Watch your fingers. Up like that. Top. And then you come down. There you have it. All those small squares. An onion. Little cubes and the little end of the bit and just chop it up. Alright, and that's it. All nice diced up. Alright, so it's been a good half an hour on the stove. And now the stock is looking absolutely delicious. So I've scooped out all of the stuff that I didn't want in the soup stock. So that's all the celery stalk and the celery, the celery root as well. Um, they don't taste like much. But you can leave it in there if you like. But I've uh, taken it out because I need the room there to throw in the potato and the beetroot that I've diced up. There we go. Now all the beetroot cubes and the potato cubes in there and the pot is almost full to the brim. So that was uh, the idea of removing all that excess unwanted uh, stock material there. Alright, so while that pot is bubbling away there, we're going to let it bubble for like another 20 minutes or until the potatoes start softening up and um, breaking down. Uh, now over here I'm going to make a quick rouge to thicken up the sauce there. I've added a tablespoon of butter and I'm also going to tip in that flour. Stir it up. Now, the way this rouge works is we want that all to bubble away. I might need to add a little bit more butter. That's not sizzling away enough.
this is more of a consistency that I'm after. Um, it's nice and runny and the flour is all well incorporated into the butter. Okay, so the plan of making that rouge on the side and adding it to the pot uh, and decanting it one spoon at a time was uh, not going to work out. So I just threw it all in the pot and um, it's really working out right now and it's starting to thicken up. Well, if you have any dill, any sprigs of dill or stalks, throw it in now because that's going to add that extra x so the soup pot has been simmering away for the last 20 minutes now. Everything's all soft, the potatoes are about falling apart and the beetroot. And now the final process is to add the sour cream. Now we don't want it to curdle, so what I'm going to do is cant a few spoonful into cold glass. And then I'll mix about 100 ml of sour cream to this and stir it around. Look right there. This is going to prevent the sour cream from separating. Pull it all down. Sorry about all the clanging noise. Get the sour cream to there. Now obviously you will add as much or as little sour cream into the soup mix as you like. Um, obviously if you like uh, that rich creamy taste to the soup, you add a little bit more. There is even some other recipes that uh, suggest you to add chunks of cheese into the mix to help um, enrich the flavour. But I can tell you that soup stock right now tastes so delicious. Okay, so that's well mixed up and to the pot and we'll now gradually pour it in as I'm stirring. Oh look at that. that that's really fun nice. Alright, time to ladle into a bowl and have taste. And there we have it folks, soup all done. Now I'm just going to lightly garnish it with a bit of sprinkling of dill. Now they do love to use their dill over all and most soups here in Eastern Europe. Now I'm just going to sprinkle a bit more for decoration. Now this is still a vegetarian dish. And for myself, I've also chopped up some smoked kielbasa to add to the soup. So you can do that as well. Burach Kolba. Zuppa Burach Kolba. So, let's have a taste. Mmm. Absolutely divine. Now, once again, thank you very much for joining in on this video. And if you like, what I've done in cooking various recipes that I've come across during my backpacking trip. Please do hit the subscribe, make your comments and see, um, give the recipe a go. And uh, if you have other suggestions, I'd love to hear it and also other ideas on how to make the soup the way your grandmother or Bubcher makes it, uh, let me know.